Now we're told that f of x can be expressed in partial fractions where we've got a over 3x plus 2, b over 3x plus 2 all squared plus c over 1 minus x. And we're asked then to show that a comes to 0 and find the values of these constants b and c. So how are we going to do it? Well what I would always do with partial fractions is always multiply both sides of your identity by whatever you see in the denominator here. So what I'm going to do is multiply each of these fractions here by 3x plus 2 squared and 1 minus x. And if I multiply this side by the denominator it's just going to leave me with 27x squared plus 32x plus 16 and this is going to be identical to a times, now if we multiply by 3x plus 2 all squared 1 minus x then one of the 3x plus 2's is going to cancel out with this repeated factor here and just leave me with a times 3x plus 2 times 1 minus x and then when I come on to this term, the second term and multiply this fraction with the denominator here the 3x plus 2 all squared gets cancelled out with this one just leaving me with 1 minus x so that's going to be b times 1 minus x and then on the last term if we multiply again this term with the denominator it's the 1 minus x that gets cancelled out leaving me with 3x plus 2 all squared multiplied by the c Okay, so we've got that line now. All we need to do is find out the value of these constants a, b and c. Now what we need to do is choose a value for x which takes out several of these factors and the first one that springs to mind is x equals 1. It's going to make this bracket 0 which will take out this term. This bracket will be 0 taking out this term so it will just give us a term containing C. Saves us doing simultaneous equations. So we'll just put here when x equals 1. I mean if we have to do simultaneous equations it just slows us down. Okay so if we substitute x is 1 into here you're going to have 27 plus 32 plus 16 and that comes to 75. And on the other side, if x is 1, this term's gone, this term's gone, and then if x is 1 in here, we've got 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5, 5 squared is 25, so you've got 25c. And so it follows from that that c is going to be 75 divided by 25, which is 3. So we've got our constant c. Normally, what I'd do is I'd search out another value that I could make x in order to make another bracket go to 0. And when I look at what we've got here, that value would be to make 3x plus 2 equal to 0. That would lead to x being minus 2 thirds. Now, I'll leave it up to you to work that one out if you wish. Put x is minus 2 thirds through the equation here on the left hand side. If we do, it's going to take this term out. It won't take this term out, but it will take this term out and you'll be able to find b. However, I'm not going to go for that in this particular example because I feel there's something easier we could do. And that is, we could compare the coefficients of x squared. We've already got c, so that's fine. And the only other term in x squared is coming from this term here which has got the a. And it's going to lead to a much easier equation. So I wouldn't do this normally, but for this question I think it works quite well. And that is, as I say, compare the coefficients, just write that in, the coefficients of x squared. Always make it clear what you're doing, okay? So coefficients of x squared, numbers in front of x squared terms. Well on this side on the left we've got 27 so we'd have 27 and there's no other x squared terms here equals now if we were to expand these brackets the only term in x squared would be 3x times minus x that'd be minus 3x squared 
times it with the a and we'd have minus 3ax squared. So the coefficient of x squared would be minus 3a. There's no x squared term in this one if you were to expand it out, so you can ignore that. And then if you were to square this bracket out, you'd have 9x squared times the c. So it'd be 9c, which would be the coefficient of x squared. Now, that would be a plus 9c, but we know that c is 3, so it would be 9 times 3. OK, so we've got 27 here, 27 on the other side. Take 27 from both sides and you end up with 0 equals minus 3a. And clearly, a must be equal to 0. Now, I do feel, as I say, that this was much quicker, easier to do than taking x as being minus um, 2 over 3. OK? Anyway, we've now got a, we've got c, we need b. How could we get b? Well, we could go around comparing coefficients again, if you like. But I'm going to go back on choosing another value for x. I'm going to choose x to be 0. You're free to choose any value you like, but 0 strikes me as being a very easy one to work with. So I'm going to say here that when x equals 0, if we substitute it into here, these first two terms are going to go out. We're just left with 16. So we have 16 equals. Put 0 into here, you're going to have 2. 0 into this bracket, you've got 1, so you've got 2 times 1 is 2, times a, a is 0, so that was a waste of time really, wasn't it? Just going to give us 0. Put 0 into this one, and you've just got 1. 1 times b is b, so you've got b. Put 0 into here, you're going to have just simply 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 times c, c being 3, is going to give us 12. So take 12 from both sides and you end up with b being equal to 16, take 12, 4. So therefore what we have at the end of the day is we've shown that a is 0 as requested and we've got that b equals 4 and c equals 3. All right.